Well, let's look at a few examples that require the use of Newton's second law. So here we have a person pushing on a doorknob with a force of five Newtons. The direction of the force is at an angle of 20 degrees from the perpendicular to the surface of the door. The doorknob is located 0.8 meters from the axis of the hinges. The doors begin to rotate with an angular acceleration of two radians per second squared. We want the moment of inertia of the door about the hinges. So when we have a force being applied, torque is where we want to get, get to. The torque due to this force Well, it's this torque that is causing the door to rotate and have this angular acceleration, alpha. And so we're going to relate the torque due to our pushing force or the person's pushing force to I and alpha this way. And let me draw a little sketch. I'm drawing the door as if I could look down from above. Now the reason why, sorry, I've got some serious lag on my computer. The reason I'm drawing this this way is so I can represent where the hinges are. The hinges represent the line that goes down through the hinges represent the rotation axis. And then I need to also represent the force that's being applied. So reading the problem again here, we're pushing on a doorknob. So here's a doorknob. We're pushing on the doorknob with a force of five Newtons, but it tells us the direction of the force is at an angle of 20 degrees from the perpendicular to the surface of the door. That's a lot of words. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to draw a line representing the perpendicular to the surface. So this dotted line I have drawn represents the line that's perpendicular to the door. It is not the force. The direction of the force is at an angle of 20 degrees from this perpendicular. So I could draw that either here at an angle of 20, or I could actually draw it over here at an angle of 20. The result will be the same. Because we only care about the component of the force that's perpendicular to the door. So this is five Newtons, 20 degrees from that perpendicular line. We're told that the doorknob is a distance of 0.8 meters from the hinges. So when we write out our torque, the torque due to this push, the push is applied 0.8 meters from the hinges. The force is five, but it is only this component of the force right here in my picture, the Y component, that is producing the torque. Because that is the component that is perpendicular to the door, to the lever arm. So I'm going to put in five cosine of 20 because this five Newton force, if I want this side of the triangle, and I know this angle is 20 degrees, this side is five cosine 20. This side is five sine 20. But a Y component, or sorry, X component, is like pushing on the edge of the door towards the hinges. I can't make a door open or close by pushing that way. So let's talk a second about this equation up here where we say RF sine phi. This is why I try to really 
talk about the conceptual aspect of torque because the inclination is to throw 20 degrees in there for phi. That's an angle, phi is an angle. But if we're taking F sine of phi, F sine of 20 specifically, we're getting the X component of the force, which again, I can't go up to the edge of a door and push inwards towards the hinges and make it open or close. So as a reminder, phi has to be the angle between R and F. So we have to measure from the door out to that force. And technically, we could find this complementary angle as well. That would still work. So using this RF sine phi equation, we would have 0.8 meters for that lever arm, the distance from the rotation axis out to the force, a force of five newtons, but then we would need to take the sine of 90 plus 20, so 110 degrees, which is totally fine. If that's the way that makes sense to you, then do it that way, but just be careful. So our torque ends up being 3.7588 Newton meters. That is the net torque. So if we come back to Newton's second law for rotation, They've told us the angular acceleration is 2 radians per second squared. So I will be the 3.758 divided by 2. How many sig figs? I have 3. So 1.88. Let's talk about the units. So I have Newton meters on the left side, and I'm dividing by radians per second squared. A newton is a kilogram meter per second squared. When we multiply it by another meter, we get the meter squared up there. These second squareds are canceling. I have kilograms times meter squared. Now, technically, I do have this radian down there, but radians are not a true unit measurement like meters are or newtons radians are a definition of a specific portion of a circle so we don't necessarily need to write that as part of our units technically they're there if you were solving this problem say on a test and you happen to write you uh, the radians in the denominator i wouldn't take anything off for that but it is good to recognize that typically we wouldn't write the radians there. It's just the kilograms times meters squared.